Let us go back to the process I am using, coffee machine model C, which produces coffee at an average temperature of 160 degrees with a standard deviation of 2.0 degrees. As we saw earlier, this process is 5 sigma capable and will produce one defect in 2 million. And that doesn't change whether I use 2 sigma or 3 sigma control limits. Notice that whether I use 2 sigma control limits or 3 sigma control limits, the same proportion of the bell curve remains within the specifications of 150 degrees to 170 degrees when the process is behaving normally. Of course, if the process is not behaving normally, it will neither be in control nor be 5 sigma capable. If the process does go out of whack, a more sensitive alarm, that is 2 sigma control limits, would be better at catching the abnormal behavior than 3 sigma control limits. But that doesn't mean using 2 sigma control limits will really make the process more capable. It will just give us a better chance of preventing out of control and out of capability situations. Say I decide to use 3 sigma control limits to control my coffee machine. The 3 sigma control limits will help keep false alarms down to 0.25%. I also decide to use a sample of nine observations to monitor my coffee temperature. Each day, I take nine random cups of coffee and measure their temperature. At the end of the day, I calculate the sample mean and plot that sample mean on my control chart. Given that my coffee machine has a mean of 160 degrees and a standard deviation of 2 degrees, I calculate my 3 sigma control limits as mean plus or minus 3 sigma or 166 degrees and 154 degrees. Notice that these upper and lower control limits are quite different from the upper and lower specifications of 170 degrees and 150 degrees. Using 3 sigma control limits, I expect that the process, when behaving normally, will produce 99.75% of observations within this UCL LCL band. I can say that this band of 154 degrees to 166 degrees represents the range of normal behavior for the coffee temperature. But will the normal behavior of a sample be the same as the normal behavior of an individual cup? Here are my samples. And they seem to behave a little differently. Consider this. Let us say that on a particular test, student scores normally range between 60 and 100 points, with the average being 80 points. We would not be surprised to find that one student got 98 points, or that another one got 62 points. The class average will also vary from semester to semester. However, in a particular semester, suppose the class average was 98. Would you be surprised? How about if the class average was 62? Obviously, the class average will vary, but not in such a wide range as the individual test scores. Likewise, if I observe an individual cup of coffee, I expect the temperature to vary between 154 degrees to 166 degrees, that is, mean plus or minus three process standard deviations. However, I do not expect the sample mean of nine observations to vary that widely. Since I am going to track the sample mean for control purposes, I need the range of normal behavior for the sample mean. This normal behavior band will be based on mean plus or minus three sigma sample rather than mean plus or minus three sigma process. The variability of the sampling distribution, sigma sample, is related to the variability of the process distribution, sigma process, as shown. As you can see from this relationship, the larger the sample size n, the narrower the normal behavior band for the sample mean will be. Since I'm using a sample size of nine observations, I can calculate sigma sample to be two degrees divided by square root of nine, which comes to 0 0.667 degree. Therefore, my UCL and LCL will be 162 degrees and 158 degrees, not 166 and 154 as I had originally calculated. 
Notice that these upper and lower control limits are also not the same as the upper and lower specifications of 170 degrees and 150 degrees. Having established the band of normal behavior for my sample mean, I can now compare my daily sample mean against this band. If the behavior of my sample mean appears to be within its normal range, I can conclude that the coffee machine is behaving normally. As I plot my sample means on the control chart, I am mindful that they should not fall outside the UCL-LCL band. But is there anything else I should watch out for? Basically, I am hoping to see normal behavior. That is, I expect to see the observations varying randomly within the band, but not following any specific pattern. A non-random pattern would indicate assignable causes or abnormal behavior. Some abnormal patterns that I need to watch out for include an increase or decrease in process variability. With normal behavior, I expect to see about 68%, say two-thirds, of my samples within the mean plus or minus sigma sample band. My process seems to have breached that expectation. I also expect to see 95.5% of my samples within the mean plus or minus two sigma sample band. Once again, I am troubled by my process. Finally, I expect to see all of my samples within the mean plus or minus three sigma sample band or the control limits. My process seems to be doing that much at least. Any departure from these above expected behaviors is worth investigating for assignable causes. As you can see from the chart, my process variability seems to be increasing over time, which is not a good sign and needs to be investigated. Another abnormal pattern is if I see a run of four or five sequential observations above or below the mean. With random behavior, there should be a 50-50 chance of each observation being above or below the mean, regardless of the previous observation. If I flip a coin, for example, the odds of getting heads is 50%. The odds of getting two heads in a row is 25%. Three heads in a row is 12.5%. Four in a row is 6.25%. Five in a row is 3.8%. Likewise, on my control chart, the odds of getting five observations in a row, above or below the mean, are very slim. Therefore, if I do see such a pattern, it is worth investigating for assignable causes. Similarly, if I see a trend of four or five sequential observations going upwards or downwards, it is worth investigating for assignable causes. Even if the process is behaving normally, it may be possible to see such a pattern just by pure chance. But the odds of such a pattern happening are very slim, so I must investigate.